Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Video Game Collector, and I'm here again with another painting tutorial. Today we're going to be showing off Mega Construct's new Halo Infinite Series 2 blind bags. Let's check out and see what I got. Nice! It looks like I got the Blue Halo Reach Mark V Variant B armor. Uh, this series has quite a good range of figures, ranging from banished figures to buildable phantom, and even a few Halo Reach inspired armors. Let's check them out. Alright, now I've gone ahead and got this figure ready to be primed and painted. All I've done is put it on some old Mega Constructs armor pieces and some alligator clips to make it easier to paint. Now, let's go over some of the tools I'll be using during this process. Of course, we've got our handy cup of water, our Citadel paints that I've recently gone through the painstakingly process of putting them in dropper bottles, which can be beneficial when dispersing paint out of the nozzles as opposed to having to scoop it out. So, to each their own, I think it's very helpful. And last but not least, I will show off my brushes I'll be using. I'm going to be using three Army Painter ones, uh, including one of the new dry brushes, and one of the Citadel Shade paint brushes. Okay, now I've gone ahead and primed this figure in Vallejo Black Spray through my airbrush. Um, this gives it a nice black matte finish. Um, this is basically just to make sure the paint adheres to the figure, as opposed to painting directly on the plastic. Uh, of course, you don't need an airbrush to get this step. Um, you can use rattle cans from Citadel um, and various other companies out there. Alrighty, we're going to get started right ahead here with our base coat. We're going to be starting out with this Vulcan Green from Citadel. All I'm going to be doing here is covering the figure from head to toe in this color, making sure I'm doing two light coats so that the paint does not splotch and ruin the look of the armor and leave any, you know, textures behind afterwards. Alrighty, now that I've got my two thin coats copied down on here, this is what the end results should look like. Uh, the armor still stands out, it's still flat, and this way I don't have to worry about any textures coming up on the armor or any splotches. Okay, now we're moving on to our next step which is going to be applying the secondary color to this figure, which is going to be Thousand Suns Blue. I am basing this color scheme loosely off just a generic Halo Reach Spartan, so I'm just using pictures off Google to reference every now and again um, of where to put the colors. So if you're wondering why I chose this design, um, look at Google. <laughs>
Alrighty, now I'm going to be moving on to some of my more darker details using Corvus Black. I'm going to be touching up pieces of the visor, the chest piece, legs, and on the arms. Um, and in this segment, you'll see me switching between two brushes just to get a better layer of detail on here. Because sometimes your bigger brush just can't handle a lot of the smaller details you're trying to paint on. So keep that in mind when you're trying to touch up small pieces like the visor or somewhere on the chest or even, you know, on the bottoms of the feet. Um, so keep that in mind as well as tilting the piece of armor you're painting to match the way you're looking and holding it with your paintbrush just because it might be easier to paint from the top um, as opposed to maybe the bottom. So just keep that in mind um, because it's, it's more than just painting the figure itself. It's finding the easiest way for you to do it. Okay, now I've got all my black armor bits painted up, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. The black I used in here is very matte, so even with a wash or two coats, it's not going to come up shiny, just like it would be on a Halo Reach figure. So you want it to look realistic. Now, let's move on to the fun part painting our metallics. These next two sections I'm going to be painting on the gold and the silver, so sit back and relax and enjoy these two sections. Now, this section here is going to be kind of some miscellaneous details I'm going to be adding. These are not mandatory, obviously. Um, these are just if you want to kind of spice up your figure, add a little detail here and there. 
and it doesn't exactly have to be just like this. You can add whatever you want. You can add stripes, you can add dots, you can add circles, whatever you feel comfortable doing, while at the same time, what you like on your figure. So I'm just going to add a simple line here, because it's similar to George's armor, and he has a line there with some numbers. And also, I don't put it in the video, but I add a small little UNSC name tag on the front of his chest. Likewise, I'm also going to add some bullet hole effects, which are kind of minimal. There's nothing too like detailed in them. It's just going to be some black dots with a tiny silver dot in the middle. And once it's washed over, it kind of adds a little depth to the figure um, and some unevenness to it. We have finally come to the last two steps. We are going to be giving it a metallic dry brush, which is pretty self-explanatory with this one. I've done it before in my past videos, but I'll just reiterate. All I'm gonna be taking is my dry brush, dipping in my silver paint and wiping off almost all of it to the point where when you rub it on your hand or finger, there's not much on there because when it goes on the figure, you do not want a lot going on it. You want to lightly dry brush on here so that it looks like it's just catching all the edges and the raised bits while at the same time still adding in that metallic flake to your arm. Um, and then in the next section, I'm going to be shading the figure, which is once again pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to be taking my Nuln Oil or whatever black wash you want to use and completely coating the figure. The catch is though, is that when you're coating the entire figure, you do not want it to pull up. You want to completely cover the figure, but when you're going over it, make sure you're, make sure with the shade washes, it's not pulling up in any of the flat bits or in your, like, recessed parts, because if it pulls up, it's going to darken it severely and stand out. And you don't really want that. You want the shade wash just to completely coat it and change the color of it. Now the moment you've all been waiting for everyone, let's check out some before and afters of what this figure looked like prior to its paint job.
Alrighty everyone, and that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it again as always. Um, I have a lot of fun making these, it's just that sometimes I don't always feel like making a video, so they might be sporadic every once in a while, but please let me know what you think down below and make sure to follow me on all my socials. Thanks guys, have a good one.